First, there was Titanfall. Then, there was Titanfall 2. And then, out of nowhere, there was Apex Legends. Nobody knew this was coming. On February 4th, Respawn Entertainment, known best for their work on the Titanfall series and before that, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, uh, the good ones anyway, dropped Apex Legends. It's a free-to-play battle royale shooter set in the Titanfall universe. It follows fairly standard battle royale mechanics. Drop in, find guns, be the last team standing. Uh, but with respawn quality combat mechanics. Now, if you've ever let me rant at you long enough in a pub, you'll probably know that I consider Titanfall 2 to be among the best examples of game design in recent years. Probably the best first-person shooter since the legendary Half-Life 2, Titanfall 2 combined fast-paced combat with very satisfying weapons, tight controls, and endlessly enjoyable traversal mechanics, um, as well as big fucking robots, to create what was, in my opinion, pretty much a classic. Um, it's a real shame because it was released sandwiched right between the Battlefield game of that year and the Call of Duty game for that year, so it was almost sent out to die, but even despite that, it grew quite a cult following. I think they may have learned their lesson a little with Apex Legends. There's no um, build-up, there's no hype for the release, because the only thing that people would have said is, why isn't this Titanfall 3? And the thing is that, despite myself, I am actually really enjoying it. Um, it's definitely taken over the time that I would have usually spent playing Fortnite or PUBG for the time being. Um, it does provide something new for the Battle Royale genre as well. Basically, what Apex Legends has done is it's cherry-picked some of the best features from the various popular Battle Royale games that exist at the moment. And it's combined them into something actually really great. Um, Jim Sterling called it Fortnite Overwatch, and that's certainly true as far as the uh, monetization model and the character progression is concerned. From Overwatch, they've borrowed the concept of hero characters with their own unique abilities and their own personalities that you get to know as you play. You also have pretty much identical equipment available for them in terms of skins, voice lines, that sort of thing, and even very similar loot boxes that you can purchase to open and get equipment for your characters. The animation itself doesn't even look too dissimilar from the one that they use in Overwatch. The game is also apparently going to be introducing a Fortnite-style Battle Pass system in the coming weeks, although that's not currently available for purchase. From PUBG, they've then brought in the concept of weapon upgrades. Um, so in Fortnite, you find a gun, that's your gun. You can't do anything with it apart from swap it for a better gun when you find one. But in this, and in PUBG, you can find weapon add-ons. You can, um, you could affix a scope or a sight to a rifle. You could affix um, a larger magazine or a stock. So any gun that you find can be useful and may well be your favorite gun. You don't have to be looking for those gold and those purple drops to have a gun that actually is decent and will serve you well in combat. One of the smartest things I think they've done is they've taken the kind of ping communication concept from Battlefield um, and they've actually made it work really well. So here in Apex Legends, it's not just a simple case of spamming a ping button to say just kind of whatever's on your soldier's mind at the moment. So it may well be there's an enemy there, it may well be I need a med kit, whatever. In Battlefield, even in Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5, they've never managed to make that feel as good as it does here. So here you have a series of context-sensitive pings that you can activate just by looking at any particular object. Um, but then also you get the option to choose to say any of these things as well. And they are very specific, so you can even ping an individual piece of equipment and say, hey, there's an armor here, there's a gun here, there's a health pack here. I'm going to ping it and then someone will come and get it. I can say there are enemies there. I can say enemies have been here. I can say that I want to go to an area, I want to loot an area, I want to watch an area, or I want to defend an area. 
These are all subtleties that would normally only come out in vocal communication. If you had voice comms, um, PS Plus or Xbox Live or something like that. What they've actually done here, and I think it's really clever, is they've managed to basically condense down anything you could possibly want to say in a Battle Royale game to your team and put it straight into the game. So you're not at a disadvantage if you don't have voice chat. And in some ways, it's actually quicker to use the ping than it is to say something on voice chat. What that also brings out is the character of some of the, well, they call them legends, um, the heroes, the characters that you can play as. They all have really unique personalities, and the voice lines that have been recorded for their ping systems reflect this. There's the gruff and no-nonsense soldier. There's the chirpy and overly enthusiastic robot. There's the stealth mirage character um, with the holograms who kind of doesn't seem like he really wants to be there. And all of these personalities come through in quite a natural way through these voice pings. There's also clearly quite a lot of effort gone into the diversity of characters within the game. You have characters from all over the world, different genders, sexualities. Um, yeah, okay, one of them is a robot. That doesn't really count. But it doesn't fall into that same trap of everyone's a white dude. I mean, whatever your personal feelings are on the subject, I'm a white dude in real life, so it's kind of fun to pretend not to be sometimes. And I can imagine that for those who maybe don't necessarily see themselves represented in mainstream gaming in quite the same way. This is pretty cool. It also leaves the doors wide open for future characters to be brought in. I'm sure we'll be seeing many more legends as the months and the years go by. Um, I'm excited to see what else they can come up with. So one of the main differences between Apex Legends and some of the other popular battle royales, there is at the moment at least only one game mode um, which is a three-player squads mode. There's no solo play, there's no duo play. But, because they've brought in these extra team play mechanics, like the advanced ping system, then actually being forced to play as a team, even with complete strangers on the internet, is still somehow pretty cool, and it works quite well. And... You end up relying on your team a lot more, and you care a lot more about your team because of the other innovation they brought into the genre, which is the respawn mechanic. So normally, in a Battle Royale team game, you would be shot and downed. Uh, PUBG does this, Fortnite does this, loads of others do it. Your friend would then have to come over and basically patch you up, heal you up a bit, get you back on your feet, then you can continue the game. In Apex Legends, you can die completely and your teammates are still able to find um, basically a marker from your body which can then be taken to a respawn point and that respawn point will then call in a dropship to drop you back into the game. You have none of your previous equipment but if you can find your old body and it's still there you can get it or you can go around and loot up again. I mean it doesn't feel particularly unfair if your team wipes you're still gone, you're not coming back. But it does give you the ability to maybe avert complete disaster um, and perhaps turn around a game that you might have been losing, use some stealth tactics, see if you can actually gain the upper hand in the end. The weaponry, of course, um, feels just as good as it ever did in Titanfall or in the uh, older Call of Duty Modern Warfare games. Respawn clearly got that down pat. And a lot of the guns are weapons from Titanfall. This is set in the Titanfall universe. Um, which does kind of beg the question is this a replacement for Titanfall 3? Certain people from Respawn have said we are not making Titanfall 3. That is not currently happening. We have no plans. And I really do think that would be a shame. I mean the multiplayer element of Titanfall 2 was a fantastic competitive shooter with all these amazing movement mechanics, wall running, jetpacks, um, grappling hooks, and obviously the Titan robots themselves. The single player was a unique piece of art, and I loved it. 
there really seems to be a genre of game that's going out of fashion these days, and I absolutely adore single-player first-person shooters. So I'm I'm really I was really glad to see it um, when it came, and and not just be a competent game with the multiplayer as the focus, but actually a fully formed single-player first-person shooter with character depth and with customization options and every level had a unique mechanic that I still don't want to spoil for you. If you haven't played Titanfall 2, I would so recommend that you go and grab a copy. It's usually like £2 on Steam these days. So, I can imagine a world in which Apex Legends was the multiplayer component for Titanfall 3. I can also imagine a world in which it wasn't, and Titanfall 3 was indeed in development, but then someone at EA said, listen, we need a Battle Royale game, we need it now, and they have the power to just snap their fingers and cancel any project they'd like. So if Respawn were making Titanfall 3, I cannot imagine a single producer at EA that would have not much rather preferred they were making a Battle Royale Something on trend, something that's going to make them some immediate money. And for better or worse, it seems as though that paid off. There were 10 million players in the first three days of this game's release. I need help. That's pretty impressive. And the simple reason for that is that actually it's really good and really fun. And I'm kind of not sure if I should be angry with myself for saying this, because I really, really wanted to see a Titanfall 3, and I still do want to see a Titanfall 3. And if I ever get one, I'll be really happy about it. But at the same time, when I finish recording this video, I'm probably going to go and play another round of Apex Legends, because it's just really fun. So, that's why I'm conflicted. Really, I, I don't want... The publishers to see the money coming in from this, the popularity coming in from this, and go, oh, we were right. We don't need to bother making single player first person shooters. We don't need a Titanfall 3. Everything needs to be free to play, Battle Royale. Everything needs to be Apex Legends. This is a gamble that paid off. Fortnite was a gamble that paid off. But there are so many of these games that have come and gone and just disappeared without a trace. And that could very easily have been this game. And I really do think if they had announced this before release, that would have been the fate of Apex Legends. It would have come out, people would have gone, oh, that's interesting, bit of a shame they killed Titanfall, that would be it. But the situation that we're in at the moment the game is allowed to stand on its own two feet. The game is allowed to say, I am Apex Legends, I am not Titanfall 3. But give me a go. So, yeah, I kind of feel like maybe this has crawled from the grave of Titanfall 3. But I'm not entirely sure we were ever going to get the Titanfall 3 that we deserved. Certainly with EA publishing the way they do at the moment, murdering studios left and right, I would much rather see Respawn Entertainment kept alive and making games like this than binned like Visceral or any of the other studios that EA have killed off over the years. Apex Legends is a surprisingly good game. And... I'm glad it exists. I just hope that I get to see Titanfall 3 as well. What do you think about Apex Legends? Have you played it? Have you avoided it because of the whole Titanfall thing? If you have avoided it, I would say give it a go. It's available on PC, Xbox, PlayStation. Uh, I'm playing on PS4 myself. It is, of course, completely free to download, so there's no upfront cost. It's a good time. It really is a good time, and I'm hoping to have some more content on the game coming out fairly soon. Let me know what you think. What are your opinions on Apex Legends? Leave me a comment. If you like the video, there's a button that lets you tell me that you liked it. And if you want to see what I'm up to next time, or see some more videos from me, hit subscribe. Why not?
it's not gonna hurt. But until next time, I'll see you later.